kids, welcome back. I'm so glad to see you and that you came back. Okay, just before we start, I am going to pray. Here we go. Dear God, I thank you for these kids watching and I thank you for their families. I pray today's story would make so much sense to them and that they would see, Lord, that you are the only one true God. You are the God who saves. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, kids, let's practice your memory verse and then we'll get right into our story. Here we go. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. First Peter 5, verse 6, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. First Peter 5, verse 7, First Peter 5, 6, and 7. Hooray, good job kids. So I just want to tell you that if you guys can sing that or say that verse at church, we are going to give you a treat for it. If you're not coming to church right now, you're watching at home, that's okay too. Just do what you did before. Call or send a video in and we will get that to you somehow. You can pick it up or we'll get it to you. Okay, that's really exciting. Now kids, your story for today is really great. I want you to think about Joshua. He has been leading the Israelites for a long time now, right? He took over after Moses and he's done some great things for God by the power of God. He's taken the Israelites into the promised land, Canaan. God held back the Jordan River as they crossed, right? Amazing. Then it was Joshua who was leading when the, the battle of Jericho happened and the walls of Jericho fell down flat just with the sound of God's people, the voices and the trumpets, a miracle. It was also Joshua who was fighting the five kings, remember last week? They were saving Gibeon and God held the sun in the sky when Joshua asked him to so they could totally defeat those enemies. Well, Joshua's lived a long life. They've gone in, they've fought many battles and they're trying to conquer the land. And as Joshua's getting older, he comes to the people the children of Israel, and he says, this is the most important thing. You need to choose God. Decide that you're only ever going to worship the one true God. All of the idols, the false gods in this land of Canaan, don't ever worship them. It only leads to death. Choose God. Kids, that's exactly what Moses said, remember? And what God said when he spoke to the people through Moses and through Joshua. Well, now... Joshua is saying it and he says to them, whatever you do, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We love the one true God. And the people came to Joshua and said, no, Joshua, we're with you. We serve God too. We choose God. And Joshua is like, this is not a little thing. This is the only thing that matters. You must only trust and love and worship the one true God of Israel, your God. All those idols, they will leave you empty. They're not real. They can't do anything for you. And most importantly, it's only God who deserves your worship. He made you and loved you and saves you. He's the only real God. So the people promised they were going to worship God. And Joshua said, okay. But when Joshua was 110 years old, guess what happens? Joshua dies. I'm going to stick him right here, guys, lying down. Because Joshua died. And... After Joshua died, guess what? The people didn't keep their promise to the Lord and they started worshiping the idols in the land of Canaan. So I have a big number one over here. The people start out following the one true God. There's the Ark of the Covenant, right? Here's all the Israelites and they're with God. But when their leader, Joshua, died, guess who they start worshiping? the idols in the land of Canaan. And I glued on here a cat because many of them were animals, probably not cats, but you never know. I know some Egyptians worship cats, but they worshiped all sorts of different carved images pretending that they were real. I mean, come on, they had just carved them themselves and then they would set them up and then worship them as if it was a God. I mean, they just made the thing. That's crazy, but that's what the people of the land were doing, and so that's what the Israelites started doing, and it was awful. And it 100% broke their promise to God, and it also broke God's heart. These were his people, 
and they forsake, they forsook him. They turned their back on God. I also glued on here money. And that was because, well, in our time, we don't usually worship idols of animals, like carved statues of animals. That's not normal. But a lot of people live for money. They want to be rich, and that's what's most important to them. That's what's they, what, it's what they worship. Okay. After they turned their back on God, do you remember what God had promised? He said, if you choose life, if you, if you worship God, I will bless you, if you worship me. And he said, if you choose to worship false gods, you're choosing death. It's only going to lead to pain and trouble, and then you will die separate from me. And so I put a big thing here. Number three is pain. They fell into huge trouble. God punished them with an invading army. So I've got army men here, and this was Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia came in, him, uh, the king of Mesopotamia, and his army and his people, and for eight years they made the Israelites under them like slaves, and it was really, really, really hard. Well, guess what they did? After that time, eight years, they cried out to God for help. God, please help. We're so sorry. Please help us, help us. And what do you think God did? God did help them. He sent to them another man to help them. And this guy's name is Othniel. Now, Othniel came. He fought a huge fight against the Mesopotamians. And he won that battle. Israel won the battle and they were free. So that's number five. God saves them. Now, I stuck on there an Iron Man and a Spider-Man so that you guys would think of superheroes because this man, Othniel, he was a judge. God sent this man as a judge to help. He was kind of like their hero. Do you know what else I glued on the board? This is a little baby Jesus from my nativity scene, and I glued him on the board because guess what? When God saves us, ultimately, guess who he sends? Definitely not... Iron Man or Spider-Man, they're just pretend, right? And not a man like Othniel, but God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who became a man, a little baby, and grew up as a real man, 100% God and 100% man. And he would save us from our sin forever, which is amazing. But this time he sent Othniel. Now, Othniel won the battle. They were free from Mesopotamia, and then all of the Israelites, they served God again. And they worshipped properly, and they loved God, and they threw out all their false gods and their idols. They destroyed them, and everything was great. For 40 years, they had peace, and they were right with God. But guess what? Othniel dies. Oh, so there's dead Joshua and dead Othniel. Don't fall, guys. Okay. Now... After Othniel died, guess what happens? The Israelites forget about God and they start worshiping the idols of Canaan again. Back to number two, idols. Terrible, the one thing God didn't want them to do. Then, after they did that, of course, God punished them. He sent pain. This time it was Moab. And he sent Eglon, the king of Moab. So we've got the army man. The army of Moab came and for 18 years they were in trouble, they were like slaves, and they were in a lot of pain under the kingdom of Moab. Well, the children of Israel cry out to God, help, we're sorry, we're, oh God, please help us, we need you. And God sends another judge. This time he sent him a a man named Ehud, okay, or Ehud. So Ehud comes, and he is going to be their judge. He is going to save them. Now, you got to know something about Ehud. Ehud was left-handed. I'm actually right-handed. Ehud was left-handed. And there was this thing. Every year, the Israelites had to pay Moab money. They had to pay tribute money to the king Eglon, king Eglon of Moab. So this year, Ehud says, I'm going to take the money. And because he was left-handed, he had a plan. He strapped a, like a sword, kind of a short sword. He strapped to his thigh, his leg. And he went with all the money and his servants, and he came to the King Eglon. Oh, King Eglon, here's your money. And after he gave it to them, he said to the king, I want to tell you a secret. 
And so the king sent away all of his servants. And he had sent away all the people who had carried the money. And they were by themselves alone in the king's room. And then Ehud said to the king, King Eglon, I have a message to you from God. Now, you guys have to know something. The king, King Eglon, was very, well, the Bible just says he was fat. He was very overweight. So his tummy was very, very large. And what Ehud did was, and this is gross, guys, he quickly grabbed the sword off his leg, whoosh, and he stuck it right inside King Eglon's stomach. And it said that the sword went all the way in and that his fat belly covered up the end, the, the handle, the hilt of the sword. So Ehud didn't even pull it out. Then after the king was dead, he went quickly and he locked the door and he got out, kind of like going out the window. He went out the other way. There was a door and he got out there and he went and he ran away. And then the servants of King Eglon were like, What's he doing? Oh, the doors are locked. Oh, maybe he's going to the bathroom. And so they waited. And all the time they waited, Ehud's like, <laughs> he's running away. And he gets away safely. And then they finally get a key and they unlock the door and their king is lying there dead. And they can't believe it. And then the Israelites, they fought back and they were freed from the Moabites, which was amazing. So Ehud now was their judge. God again had saved his people. He'd given them this judge, Ehud. And then, guess what? After that, the Israelites, they faithfully followed and worshipped God. For 80 years, there was peace in the land. Until Ehud died. Oh, Joshua, you're falling off. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick Ehud underneath you. You can lie on him. Okay. So when Ehud died, do you guys have any guesses? What happened with the Israelites? Same thing happened again. They turned their back on God and they worshiped the idols in the land of Canaan, the false gods. They were in trouble again and they cried out for help again. And would God help him? Help them? Yes, yes, they would. He would help them again. So God saved his people. And this kept going around and around and repeating over and over. And we find it all in the book of Judges. Okay, and it's called, a fancy name for it is called the cycle, kind of like a bicycle tire, it goes around and around, right? The cycle of apostasy. And apostasy means to turn your back on God. And that's what they would do. They'd be faithful and they'd love God, but when their leader died, then they would turn their back on God and they would worship idols. And it was awful. And so kids, I just want you to remember what Joshua said at the very beginning. I'm going to read it to you from my Bible. Joshua said to the people, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what we need to do, kids. We need to choose to serve God. We need to remember that he's the only true God. He's the only one that saves. And kids, I want to ask you a question. And it might be a tricky thing to know the answer to. But why would God punish his people? Why would he send an army or another kingdom to come and give them pain and trouble? Do you know why God would do that? I mean, he warned them. He promised he would do that if they turned and worshipped idols. So he was keeping a promise. But besides that, do you know why he would do that? God didn't want the Israelites just to be happy. He wanted them to be saved. He wanted them to be holy. And he knew that if they were worshiping idols and they died, they would die separate from him and they would end up going to hell. He wanted to save them. And so he wanted to bring them back to himself because that's the only way we're saved is if we have faith in God and we believe in the one true God. It's the only way we can be saved. And so he sent the pain so that they would cry out for help so that he could save them and bring them back to himself. And then they could be saved and they wouldn't die and go to hell if they died. So that's amazing, kids. God loves us very much. And he did the same thing for us ultimately forever when he sent Jesus, our one savior that we, we didn't need another one after that. Jesus was it. He was the ultimate savior. And I hope that you guys trust Jesus with your salvation, that you repent and you believe in him only. I think you guys are great, and I can't wait to see you, and I hope I'll see you next week, too. Okay, guys, bye.